Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Brook along with Chuck Shelby, Risk Management Commodities. We ended mixed on Friday in both grain and livestock futures trade row crops, holding on to some gains. Wheat gave it up into the close, but over in the livestock futures, cattle lower hogs higher. And Chuck, let's talk a little bit about the row crop sector. Like I said, we were up a little on Friday, but down for the week. Why? We started out the week uh, in pretty good shape and, and we had some fantastic exports in beans, but uh, the market had rallied. It went up into the $14 level in the soybean market side of the equation. And when we ended the week, we were down uh, about 30 cents for the week. So I think the market uh, kind of ran out of steam. We had probably some producers selling up there. Uh, the other component of it is what the funds want to do. And they probably took some profit. They were long beans, took some money off the table. On the corn side, uh, we made a run earlier in the week up towards $5 in some contract months. But then as we went on during the week, uh, market settled off and the funds are short. Uh, they continue to defend their positions. So uh, the market just ran out of steam and it was a holiday week coming. Uh, a lot of a lot of the traders didn't want to you know, risk the weekend. So money came off the table. Yeah, we also had first notice day and September contracts. Um, we saw some rolling, obviously, out of some of those positions, but also did we see a pickup in farmer selling here as a result of that on some old crop? We did in corn. Uh, there were producers who still had corn that they were un unable to sell or unwilling to sell. So they know harvest is coming. So there is a lot of old crop corn moving. Uh, the cost to roll that is about 18 cents. So a lot of producers didn't want to pay that fee, just took the money. So I think there's probably another week's worth of corn that's got to come off the farm to clean it up so that they have space for the upcoming harvest. Is this crop getting smaller in your mind or is the market trading or thinking that this crop is gonna get smaller or not? It looks to me like the crop is gonna go back backwards pretty quickly. Uh, I think harvest will be accelerated. I don't know if the trade really understands how much this crop is going backwards. Uh, it's certainly gonna you know, impact the corn on the grain field and, and a lot of that crop, especially in the Western states that were in the drought and, and have been short on moisture, 95 or 100 degree temperatures is just gonna be the end of the crop. On the soybean side, you certainly can impact, uh, you know, knock off those top pods. The size of the beans are gonna be impacted by this. So uh, I think the crop is gonna be smaller at the end of the day than, than what a lot of the trade are thinking. Uh, we do have the upcoming USDA report where they're going to be out in the field and, and should have a decent handle on it, but uh, certainly not the kind of weather uh, that we want to end the crop. And that's not good for the upcoming next two to three weeks, even though there might be some a little bit of rain around, but there's no significant rain of one plus inches across the Corn Belt coming. But Chuck, do you think that the market is waiting to get confirmation of that before we can move back above 14 on beans and maybe even try to challenge or get above $5 on corn? I, I think we're probably going to have to see combine results. There's such variability out there that it's hard to determine what the yield is really going to be. But I, I think once combines roll, producers get out there, you're going to see some good yields, but you're also going to see areas that uh, are certainly not good and have been impacted pretty much by the ongoing dryness in a lot of the parts of the country. Uh, I think the crop, again, will be smaller due to the fact of this weather, but it might take another month, six weeks before we really know the impact of the seasonal dryness. And certainly the end of this growing season is not what you really want. So if that crop is getting smaller, do you think that we already put in our harvest low? I'm not I'm not confident of that at this point. I, I think there's still the dealings with the funds. We have lack of demand. Uh, I think we could still, you know, probe down to the lower side here, especially if the USDA doesn't lower the yield enough on that September crop report. So not real confident that the, the harvest lows are in. Uh, but I do think at the end of the day, as we move towards the harvest and finish that out, that we're going to find that this crop is is a lot smaller than what uh, the trade might be thinking. So what is your marketing advice here? Um, it's really paid to sell off the combine a lot of years here recently. What do you think? A seller store? Uh, I think the cost of money and the cost of the storage is going to be pretty significant part of our decisions. Again, we like going out there, we own it on paper. If you store, you have to realize it's got to go up on paper for you to get any gains. So I think 
the cost of storage, the cost of money, uh, I think that's about equal to what the market can rally for what we know right now. So I prefer the idea of uh, re-ownership on paper, uh, especially if you got bushels, you know, you can't store on your farm. I think you've got to find a home for those and, and have a plan to re-own on paper and I can see what this crop is and, and where we can go with it. And more contract lows here in the wheat market this week. And, you know, are we getting anywhere close to a bottom there, Chuck? It constantly uh, continues to uh, look for a bottom, you would think, with the break we've had. But you've got to look at Russia and they're continuing to push wheat on the world. Somewhere out here, I would think we're getting close to a bottom. What about this cattle market? Uh, we were down on Friday, down for the week, and uh, some of that was kind of due to disappointment about the cash trade. But are the funds also getting out of some of their longs here? Well, I think it's a combination. You know, with the best demand we're going to have probably as we moved into the Labor Day holiday. And going forward, I think uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens as we are past the final holiday of the summer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Holiday of the summer, will we be able to? see the demand for beef uh, stay stable or will it decline and, and will we see the hog market pick up that uh, has a cheaper cut what's your thoughts about hogs because we've been kind of chopping around here um pretty volatile moves in what looks to be kind of a sideways pattern where do you think this market is headed i think i'm optimistic on the hog side i i, I think they're a cheaper cut uh, I think as we move into fall and early winter, the demand for pork will be there. So I'm optimistic. I think the pork market will continue to find a base and work higher. Great. Thanks for joining us. Chuck Shelby, Risk Management Commodities. That is Markets Now.